don't know who's on. Uh, that would be Mr. Bill Cole. If the children would come forward to this side of the church this morning, we'll have our children's message. Hello. Is it? Is yeah, it's on. Okay. Good morning. Wow, we got a big crew here this morning. I'm going to read you a story. You've probably heard it before, but I'm going to read it again anyway. It's called Little Red Riding Hood. Have been, everybody heard Little Red Riding Hood? Okay. I want you to listen closely to it this morning. There might be something different about it, okay? Once there was a little girl who was called Little Red Riding Hood. People call her that because of the red sweater she always wore. One day her teacher sent Red Riding Hood out to take a basket of coal to her rich old aunt, who was very sick. On her way, she was stopped by a big bad lion who said, where are you going? I'm taking this basket of coal to my dear sick auntie, replied Yellow Riding Hood, and off she skipped through the jungle. The lion ran off, and since he could run faster than Yellow Riding Hood could skip, he got to auntie's house first. He put auntie in the garage, took her clothes so he could fool Blue Riding Hood when she got there. Soon there was a knock at the door, and the lion said in his sickliest auntie voice, Who is it? It's me, auntie, little green riding hood said. I brought you a basket of coal. Come in, dear, replied the lion. Red riding hood came in and climbed up on the bed beside the lion, she thought was her auntie. Oh, auntie, she said, what long hair you have. All the better to style for you, said the lion, fluffing her mane. But auntie... What big feet you have. All the better to, for stomping on bugs, my dear, said the lion. But, Annie, what long whiskers you have, said little purple, red riding, little purple Riding Hood. All the better to tickle you with, said the lion. And he tickled Red's nose, and she sneezed and sneezed and ran home and lived happily ever after. The end. Now, did you notice anything different about that story? Yeah, there was a lot of things, weren't there? Now, it had some changes, but you might even call these changes mistakes or flaws. Now, I want to read you a scripture verse. It's in the Bible, in Psalm 18, verse 30. And the verse says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. God's word, the Bible doesn't have any mistakes. This Bible was written by God, inspired by God. He's always right. He never changes parts of the story. That's why we can trust the Bible to what it says and always believe it. It shows us the best way to live our lives. God's Word and God's ways are always perfect. Let's pray. Father, at this time of year when we're coming up on a new year and traditionally the idea of the new year is to make changes and start over. Put in our hearts one of the changes that we're going to make is that we will read the Bible and we will believe what we read. Uh, The Bible's a, a way for us to live and it's the perfect way. We should strive at all times to follow that way. These things we ask in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.